Before we begin, thank you very much to Draven Holt for joining the Patreon campaign over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. Every little bit helps. Every little bit keeps the channel going, keeps the daily videos coming, and helps me keep TJ Omega as a thing. So thank you guys very much for that. And I know times are tough if you can't afford it. Just hit like and subscribe. That helps me out a lot too. So this concept admittedly is not quite fully cooked yet. Um, I, I wanted to do this once I had some robot modes made and drawn up, uh, potentially some logo artwork, etc. I wanted to make it like a full brand pitch. But you know what? This was my most common question, both in the AMA and also uh, anytime I stream. I think people have asked me more than anything, what would you do with a new Transformers series? Like, what would you do to create something new? Because I'm one of those. I'm one of those fans that's like, you can't just keep rehashing G1 forever. You got to do some new things. Be bold and daring like you were 20 years ago. So in that regard, let's actually take a look at something that I've been cooking up uh, as some way of uh, adapting Transformers into something a little bit different that we haven't really done before. This is a concept that I have dubbed Transformers Rollout in a great tradition of using Transformers jargon in the actual titles. Energon, Cybertron, uh, most of IDW 1.0. In this regard, um, I, I mean, it's a reference to just the general flow of the series. So we kick it off in very familiar fashion. Four million years ago, you know, the wars on Cybertron have ravaged the planet, depleted on Energon. Optimus Prime, in desperation, leads a team of all of his best Autobots off the planet to find a new source of energy to revitalize their world. Megatron picks up on this, chases after the two, cra the two battle in, in space, crash on Earth, etc., etc. We know this story. We've been here plenty of times before. Why am I telling the exact same story when I said I wanted something new? Well, four million years later, in modern times, uh, in modern times, somewhere on Earth, a volcano erupts and nothing happens. There is no war between Autobots and Decepticons on Earth. There are no robots in disguise. Optimus Prime and saving the day, Megatron stealing resources. It's not happening. No. Instead, we are focusing on another ship that has recently landed on the planet. And this one is just a scavenger ship. Very small, very stealthy, and meant really just for... Uh, just meant for, like flying in, grabbing stuff, and leaving, that kind of thing. But in this case, it is currently being is currently being homed by five Cybertronians. Not Autobots, Cybertronians. See, the problem with abandoning the planet and looking for new Energon is not every Cybertronian is going to fit on that ship. There are going to be those left behind, and this is the story of those left behind and their own desperations. What we have here is a crew called the Scroungers. This is led by a would-be Autobot named Driveline. Now, I would say would-be Autobot because he fits the mold. If we look, and I've used some Hot Wheels cars just to kind of give you a, a little bit of visual representation of something I have in mind for the characters in general tone. Um, driveline would be patterned after like a stylized muscle car, exposed, you know, red, exposed engine, exposed uh, exhaust pipes, similar to Hot Rod, admittedly, uh, not as extreme of an exposed engine as this, obviously, uh, but very different in robot mode. Uh, this is one reason why I needed to, I really hope to sketch these things out, but I kind of ran out of time here. Uh, maybe at some point, if people like this story, we'll pick up on it at some point where I've actually got everything drawn out. You can see what exactly goes through my head. But Driveline is going to be the leader of this mission. So he's organized this not to find Optimus Prime. In his mind, Optimus Prime abandoned them four million years ago. So he has no loyalties. He's not an Autobot. He is just 
a Cybertronian trying to survive and save his planet. He happened to be the first one to come across the old records in an auto, you know, in an old Autobot base on Cybertron, detailing the plan Optimus Prime had, which lets him figure out the trajectory of the Ark's course and figure out exactly where they might be. He's basically the first one to find out about Earth. He organizes this team not to find Optimus Prime, but to find the Matrix of Leadership, because he, you know, Prime in his mind, Prime abandoned them. He he could he could join the Matrix for all he cares. All he wants is this bauble that might let him reboot the planet if it's as powerful as they say, and maybe you know save the dying world. So that is his goal here. You know he could care less about Autobot and Decepticon. Uh, he is genuine in his desire to save the planet. You know he is a good guy. He would never call himself an Autobot because of his abandonment and betrayal feelings. But uh, for what he feel like, for, but he is genuine. Like he wants to be the hero that saves the world, you know. And you know he'll do the same here on Earth, here and there. Uh, our crew then contains a repair truck named Salvage. Uh, this is this is going to be the older guy of the team. So he has been watching out for Driveline a long time. Uh, he Driveline by nature is kind of a, an adventurous sort, and gets himself into one or two scraps. So he's been fixing up Driveline for a long time now. So he wasn't going to let him fly off to Earth with you know a bunch of you know random people. He just you know, scavenged up. He's more mellow. He's more laid back. And amidst all the clashing personalities going on with this team, he's the one that manages to keep everything together and kind of mellow things out when things get a little bit too heated. Um, and of course, he also he also provides, you know, the ratchet role of being in charge of, you know, repairs and such. But he's not going to be like the old codger type. You know, he's like mellow grandpa. Um, he's been around long enough to actually remember the Great Wars, so he is very adamant about this mission to not only, like, revitalize planet Cybertron, but also prevent these wars from ever happening again. There is something in my head that says if he were to actually, he's mellow, he's laid back, but if he were to actually discover Megatron, you know, stasis lock or functioning, if he's any sort of alive and vulnerable probably just end it so he's got he has a little bit of an agenda himself for the greater good but it's kind of a twist that he's got this like old war veteran side to him he doesn't want to revisit so uh joining the team we have mudslinger mud is not a thing on cybertron in my mind they researched the uh they, re they researched actual like things on earth and found out that his natural name probably wouldn't be so polite here so so mud slinger it is uh, and i am borrowing some names that have been used in the past salvage was an old movie toy mud slinger is one of my favorite uh, micro masters um, these are names that have existed before just, to, just for the sake of sounding familiar but they've never been major characters so at least not in america so i want to give them a little bit of highlight but Mudslinger himself is going to be our, he's going to be our hothead. He's going to be our, uh, he's going to, he's going to be our gruff one. Uh, so backstory to him is he's actually a Decepticon, not a sleeper agent or anything. That doesn't really, ex you know, not a, really a thing, the way things are balanced out right now. Uh, instead, he is uh, a former Decepticon who got into some trouble and saw this mission to leave the planet as an excuse to actually get away from all of his troubles before any stray Autobot happened to find him. He doesn't tell his other teammates this, and you know, for the most part, he tries to keep to himself. He's not really interested in saving the day and being a hero, saving these like weak fleshlings. He's mostly just along for the ride and just following Driveline's uh, instructions and plans Mostly just to save face and keep the suspicion down. He's playing along, is what he's doing. But he does have a character. He would have a character arc to him, where he does start to grow to like his team. And oh, this this hero stuff is actually not too bad. I'm actually, you know, it's slow. It's slow. And 
you know, we'll, we'll find out that he's enjoying it, enjoys being the hero, before we find out he's uh, a former Decepticon. Moving on from Mudslinger, we've got Hightail. Uh, Hightail is going to be a... She's going to be the team's... Well, she's going to be the female on the team. Like, I hate to do that one token female thing, but I want to keep this cast pretty limited. Because uh, I feel like the problem Transformer cartoons always have when they try to get everyone in is there's so many characters that get nothing. Uh, so, kind of Beast Wars logic. Some limited, like contained cast at least for at least for a season one so she is the bright and optimistic one uh she you know she you know she is uh you know she she is the high energy of the team she's also something of a historian she idolizes optimus prime and the autobots and what they meant and what they fought for and she is always ready with a story of grand adventure that the past autobots went on this is how I'm going to incorporate the likes of Optimus, Bumblebee, Megatron, Starscream into the story. So Hasbro and the retailers can actually be happy to have those characters out on a toy shelf because they appear in Hytale's flashback stories. And because we are basically centering the entire storyline around find Optimus Prime, you're still going to make him a very exalted character in the series and thus very important and kind of mythical almost, rather than just being, like, the main guy on the show. Uh, you can do the same with Bumblebee, too, uh, and, you know, like, Megatron being the source of, like, ominous dread, you know, because we don't know where Optimus Prime is is one problem. We don't know where Megatron is. That's a much more dangerous problem. So we have both of those going on, and high tail stories tell us exactly how bad both of those situations are. It's her mission on this mission to convince Drivetrain he is wrong about the Autobots and that there is something to be admired and even, like, joined. In the course of this series, she's going to be the only one wearing an Autobot emblem, uh, mostly just because, like, idol worship. She never officially joined. You know, she wasn't brought online before Optimus and everyone left, but she believes in the cause and she believes in, in, uh, in their fight. So, also, I want to point out, at this point, this is a series where I would very much be in favor of introducing Hollow Matter avatars like the IDW comics did. Not only because, hey, I want a motorcycle on the team, but also because, you know, I, I, it's going to give them an opportunity to wander around and explore things and learn more about Earth from a more normal perspective. I actually want there to be a robots in disguise aspect to this because it's going to be really hard to find Optimus Prime if there's a whole bunch of government agencies tracking them down. So we move on to the final member of the team, Excelion. Of course, I'm going to put a Cybertron character in here. Don't, don't, don't at me. So Cybertron sports car, uh, he's kind of the hot shot of the team, you know, kind of literally. Carefree, confident. He signed on to the team mostly because he hated the way Cybertron was, and partially because he hates seeing his home world in such bad condition, but also because he feels helpless to do anything about it. In reality, you know, but that's the reality of it. In out as an outward appearance, he's just, just he's just trying to get away. He kind of views this whole thing as a vacation and to get away from all the darkness and desolation that's going on on the planet Cybertron. So this is like field trip. This is this is just him trying to have fun. Uh, yeah, so he's the he's the one's hard to keep on task. He's the one that doesn't fall in line as much as Driveline. Keep in mind, Mudslinger's a Decepticon, but he's trying to save face. So he is following his orders. Uh, Excelion, not so much. He's the one that really wants to just be on his own and do whatever he wants. Uh, he's going to be a lot to wrangle in but very valuable asset to the team if he can do it. So the trip itself. So it's called Rollout because I want to do the one thing that I don't think I've seen Transformers do outside of like one or two you know, episodes. And that is going to be uh, one thing you can do in cars that Transformers hasn't revolved a story around. The road trip. This will be them starting from one end of the country, driving and exploring around the rest. The goal is to find, uh, oh, hang on. As my images didn't uh, update, give me a second. 
Okay, now they've updated. It's all out of orientation. Great, 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 great. But we'll move on. We will carry on. Uh, so the mission here is to find where the Ark crashed. Driveline could find the trajectory to find the planet, but he could not find the exact location on the planet where it landed. A general vague idea of what continent, which, hey, it happens to be the English-speaking continent. So they land, and it is basically exploring the... the the, the exploring the roads of the country, visiting different sites, you know, encountering different events, trying to find this little breadcrumb trail of people who have seen or, you know, believe they saw robots or believe that they saw crashed UFOs or whatever they think might be some kind of clue as to where the Ark currently is. Uh, in the course of this, they're going to encounter... Uh, opportunities to save the day. Aside from episodes that revolve around their own internal conflicts, they're also going to encounter, you know, some natural disasters that they have to they have to save towns from. Uh, you know, you know, one crisis or another that's you know maybe a little bit too big for humans to handle. They're going to get the opportunities to be heroes. You know, and drivetrain doesn't consider himself to be an Autobot, but he considers himself to be a hero. So he is going to you know, protect and guard humans whenever possible. Uh, and he's and we're going to get plenty of opportunity to do that. Occasionally, it might be another stray Autobot that they run across who will, you know, maybe not join the team, but at least be a contact for another area. Or it could also be a Decepticon, ones who followed drivetrain's ship, or ones that actually got to Earth first, who are also on on the path. These these would be flyers. That's the end thing. Like I don't want any of the Autobots to be flyers because I want them to be I want them to be landlocked. So any Decepticons they encounter have a reason why they can get ahead of them and encounter them again. And we are going to meet several Decepticons along the way who are causing strife on the planet. Um, they aren't necessarily looking for Optimus Prime. They're looking for Energon. They're looking to cause mayhem, etc. They aren't actually like on the same track till later on. Later on, when things kind of when the Decepticons they encounter start getting a little bit organized, maybe fall under certain leadership, they will uh, they will be a little bit more definite, defined in their goals and attempts to uh, interfere with Drivetrain's team and the the, the scroungers in general. But that is going to be like how the season is going to play out. Natural disasters, infighting, Decepticon encounters. Those are going to be your, your main three styles of plots until we make it all the way to the final episode of the season where, yeah, of course they find the Ark. A bunch of Decepticons in the way, but they manage to find the Ark. And when they go inside, the whole place is empty. Not a single Autobot or Decepticon found. We spent this whole season finally trying to track down the Ark, and when we actually do, the main goal of the whole thing is not there. The road trip continues into Season 2 as we go from what happened to the Ark to what happened to Optimus Prime. Where is he now, and where is the Matrix on Earth? Reactivating Teletran 1 is going to give them a little bit of a breadcrumb trail to follow again, and again along the way. We're going to re-encounter some of the Autobots that they ran into from Season 1. They're going to join the road trip at that point. Um, somewhere in the course of this series, we're going to pick up a couple human teenagers. Uh, most likely a brother and a sister that can get away long enough to go on a road trip. Uh, or, you know, they're just going off to college. That kind of thing. Either way, they do need some human companionship just so they can actually... Uh, learn more about human culture and adapt to the planet, but but on the sec on the you know, the second road trip we can go wilder. It's not going to be a straight line. It can be all over the place. You know they can, you know maybe we do pick up an Autobot jumbo jet that can fly them to different locations. We maybe we do go and take the road trip to other countries, and it's all about what happened to Optimus Prime. You know is he still you know are they functioning and are hidden amongst the earth. Uh, were they captured? Uh, did they fall out of the ship before it crashed? Did they shoot escape pods and they're somewhere else? That's the mystery for the second season. Now, beyond that, 
I have ideas, but nothing concrete enough. For this video, I just want to give you like a basic outline of what I would intend. It would be road trip based. It would be all original characters. But because retailers and Hasbro want the big characters on the toy shelves, we're going to give you a lot of flashbacks and let you get uh, get an idea for what this version of those characters are like, thanks to Hytale's history lessons. So we kind of hit that happy little medium between here's the characters that you know retailers want versus here's something new that fans can sink their teeth into. And I really like the idea of the road trip keeping the the plots and the environments fresh. So we're always doing something new in series. So that, that is Transformers Rollout in a nutshell. If you want to see more, I can develop a Season 2 storyline. Um, I can flesh out the characters. Or I might just like show you like internally what my head designs are for exactly what these characters look like. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see more. And until then, I will see you next video. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.